I'm actually emceeing and, and keynoting, and we're going to talk about all the amazing announcements uh, uh, and news uh, in the open source community in Europe, from a Linux Foundation Europe standpoint, and more globally across the open source world in the Linux Foundation. Hi, this is your host, Apni Bharti, and we are here at Open Source Summit in Bilbao, Spain. And today we have with us once again, Gabriele Colombro, GM of Linux Foundation Europe and Executive Director of Finos. Gabriele, it's great to have you back on the show. And actually, you are the one who's opening my whole interview sessions here at the event. Uh, we met a few months ago at the Open Source Summit in Vancouver. And there is so much to talk about, uh, especially that you are emceeing this event, you delivered a keynote and a lot of announcements there. But before we go there, just tell me uh, how has been the event so far? What kind of audience, what kind of turnout? Let's just talk about the event. Well, first of all, thanks for having me here, Swapnail. It's always uh, a great pleasure. Um, well, uh, I feel at home here. I actually, uh, I'm Italian, but I've, I've studied in Spain. I speak Spanish and it's, it's you know, Bilbao is such a beautiful city. Um, the event is, is looking great. The venue is is fantastic. I think we had a great turnout. The the keynote this year, I've, I've been emceeing for the first time as, as you know, I run Linux Foundation Europe now. Uh, so I, I was really pleased with the uh, sort of the energy. I mean, we're, we're just at the beginning, but I see folks being very engaged. Uh, it's, a, it's a momentous time in open source. And I think uh, the crowd, it's very diverse, you know, corporate contributors, individual contributors, um, public sector. I, I, think, I think they get that this is a super interesting time in open source. Oh, when we look at tech conferences in general, uh, open source summit, before that it was LinuxCon, you folks play a very big role in this space. And I do like to repeat that message because the fact is Linux Foundation, you folks paved path for a lot of corporate players, companies to not only start embracing open source, but also get involved with it. So, so talk a bit about uh, corporate presence, companies presence, or, or, or just uh, give us kind of some takeaways, highlight of your keynote this morning. I think you make a, a, a very important point, and this was actually one of the themes in, in the keynote. Um, I tried to really tee up the common traits uh, and the themes that we're going to develop over the next three days. Linux Foundation does, uh, you know, bring together all the different constituents and historically, as you say, the open governance model that, that uh, the Linux Foundation provides, it's really about creating a level playing field for individuals and corporate contributors. I would add with my Linux Foundation Europe hat on that we are seeing uh, a new frontier here where the public sector is starting to also get engaged uh, more uh, effectively in open source. And in fact, you know, this is one of the themes that I've uh, started developing today during my, my opening keynote. Uh, we've identified uh, five main themes that uh, we're going to uh, sort of touch on uh, throughout the conference, through the announcements that we're going to make, and that really are very topical uh, you know, across the Linux Foundation, but particularly in Europe, I think. And and uh, the first two we really started today. Um, the first one is the, the the critical role of open source in vertical industries. As you know, I also run Finos, so I might be a little biased here, but I have seen how open source is now uh, pervasive in you know finance through Finos in telco through LF networking. Uh, we actually announced today Project Silva, which is another European-based LF Europe-centric uh, uh, cloud telco project across the large uh, 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 operators and mobile uh, operators uh, in uh, Europe. Um, so definitely vertical industries continues to be, I think, an important area of development Open source is not just about technology, it's truly about delivering business values as industries undergo the digital transformation. So I think this is the sort of one of the key themes I developed today. And then the second one is, uh, we touched, touched on it, the, the growth of public sector engagement in open source, um, the creation of venues, uh, for the government to be effectively influencing and participating open source projects, you know, uh, 
the Open Wallet Foundation. It's one of our LF Europe projects, uh, has a government advisory council, ha has uh, recently announced uh, 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 Microsoft and Google as members. So that really is the epitome of this idea of bringing together the public sector, technology companies, industry companies across uh, the same project in open source. And then there's a couple more teams that we're going to develop in the next few days uh, through uh, uh, our announcements and our keynotes. Um, you know, you would not be surprised to hear that one of them is open source and AI, uh, and I'm not going to spoil it uh, uh, just yet, but uh, clearly we've seen uh, in 2023, the year of AI, we have seen how open source has accelerated uh, the democratization and innovation of uh, uh, AI um, through the, you know, LAMA uh, 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 large language model uh, sort of being the first milestone in this area. Uh, and so we're going to have some exciting announcements throughout the week here. Uh, and then finally, the other two teams are open source and sustainability. It's something that is really critical, uh, you know, not just open source sustainability, but the impact that open source can make on sustainability and issues like climate change, uh, social inclusion. And then last but not least, kind of going back to your initial point, the importance of open governance as an additional layer on top of, of course, open source and using licenses that are, uh, you know, uh, allow the value exchange that we're so used to in the open source community. Kind of going back to the theme of open governance and the importance of it, I think, uh, you know, one of the major news uh, earlier this year was, uh, you know, uh, HashiCorp changing their license uh, for Terraform on some parts of Terraform uh, to the business source license, which is effectively not an open source license. Um, and so, Probably most folks in the community are familiar with the fact that uh, a fork, a hard fork has been launched, uh, formerly known as OpenTF, uh, with a manifesto they came out. And uh, we're very excited to announce this week that uh, uh, now called OpenTofu uh, will become a Linux Foundation project. Uh, uh, tofu is, of course, a very malleable food, and uh, uh, the idea is really that this new uh, 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 framework will be uh, supportive and adaptable to uh, all needs in terms of, you know, infrastructure provisioning. Uh, and, you know, before I close, I want to be clear, this is not a religious thing. I think each corporate, like HashiCorp, has fully their prerogative of, you know, changing the license of a project that they own the full copyright for. But from the consumer standpoint, uh, from the standpoint of an individual or a company or an enterprise that is investing or creating a dependency on an open source project, it's truly important to be able to say, hey, I have an alternative, I have optionality, I know that the project that is openly governed will not change the license and sort of uh, ch change my risk profile effectively. And so uh, I think this goes back to what we were talking before about, you know, the importance of layering uh, open governance on top of open source. And that's, of course, you know, sort of our bread and butter. You mentioned AI and as you know, generative AI, AI is a hot topic these days. And I feel that this is a place where Relix Foundation can play a very big role. There are a lot of uh, AI related projects which has the word open in it, but they are not truly open source. So talk about uh, what is Linux Foundation doing? What are, what are you folks doing in this space? You're absolutely right. And we're very excited uh, on Thursday. Oh, sorry, I'll restart. Um, yeah, we're, you're absolutely right, Snapnail. Uh, open source and AI, uh, you know, has been a hot topic this year. I mean, AI itself, as of late 2022, of course, we're, we're I would say, living the AI summer uh, as opposed to the AI winter over the last couple of decades. Um, but, you know, earlier in the year, most people probably have seen the uh, leaked paper from Google called We Have No Moat that really truly talked about how open source large language models uh, are accelerating faster than anyone would have had predicted. And that really, you know, the paper really said, neither Google nor OpenAI have a moat versus open source AI innovation. And so, uh, 
you know, if you pair that with the need for open governance around some of these large language models and the idea that, you know, uh, it's important that such a powerful technology be democratized, um, we are super excited uh, to announce uh, that uh, we're starting a new initiative under the LFAI and Data Foundation uh, called Generative AI Commons. Uh, we are going to host, uh, uh, um, you know, we're going to provide a way to have large language models in uh, a monopoly governed uh, fashion. And we're also announcing our first large language model uh, contributed uh, to the Linux Foundation under the Gen AI Commons, uh, under the auspices of LFAI and data. So very exciting developments, I think, uh, for the open source community and for the AI community. Now let's talk about Linux Foundation Europe. It was announced almost a year ago in, in Dublin. Uh, let's talk about uh, some updates on the foundation. Let's talk about either new members, new projects. Just give us an update. What's going on with the, with the foundation? Actually, yesterday we hosted our first Linux Foundation member summit in Europe. Uh, it was, uh, I think, a smashing success. Uh, we had, uh, you know, it, it seems a lifetime ago, but it was just a year ago that we announced a Linux Foundation Europe. And since then, we have now reached almost 150 members uh, who clearly have validated the need for a regional entity that can act as a gateway uh, towards the broader Linux Foundation, uh, you know, open collaboration platform and federation. Um, we uh, uh, showcase the four projects that we uh, launched in the last year, uh, the Open Wallet Foundation, uh, Project Silva, who we just announced today became a funded project by some of the largest uh, telco operators in Europe. Uh, and then we have RISE, the RISC-V software ecosystem, uh, you know, companion to our RISC-V international uh, 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 organization, but building, you know, the software part of it, the sort of software companion to the uh, specification work that happens in RISC-V. And then last but not least, this announcement from a couple of weeks ago, uh, the Servo project uh, uh, was uh, moved to Linux Foundation Europe. Uh, Servo is a, a Rust-based uh, web engine. Uh, so think about, you know, alternative to Blink or WebKit, truly that uh, 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 platform layer that enables, you know, web rendering, but based in Rust. So, you know, with all the good things that come with the sort of memory safety and, and sort of security features of that language. Uh, this is actually a pretty big project, 20,000 starts on GitHub. So we're very excited about that. Uh, and of course, last but not least, um, this is going to be something that we really amp up our messaging this week uh, is, uh, you know, the Cyber Resilience Act. Uh, I, I Honestly, when we launched Linux Foundation Europe a year ago, I didn't realize how much of uh, our effort uh, was going to be focused on educating the public sector on, uh, you know, the impacts of uh, uh, the Cyber Resilience Act and other uh, a legislation that is coming down on the open source community. And so today uh, we have launched our Fix the CRA campaign. We're asking for our community to uh, help us and, and be vocal to uh, help adjust, you know, uh, the aspects of the Cyber Resilience Act that truly risk to undermine open source in Europe as we know it. Uh, and I want to be clear, the CRA has very worthy goals about bolstering cybersecurity, uh, but the way it's drafted, it truly risks to uh, append the value exchange of open source in the way we've all have been used to, you know, appreciate and, and we'll benefit from. Gabriele, thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me and talk about the foundation, give us an update, especially the whole uh, involvement with the public sector, of course, uh, generative AI. So thanks for all those updates and I would love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. It's always a pleasure to talk to you.